The Dictionnaire Infernal, or the Infernal Dictionary, is a book that was first published in 1818, written by Jacques Colline de Plancy. The book is essentially a dictionary of the occult, describing a large variety of demons and their hierarchy. The most famous version of the Infernal Dictionary was the 1863 edition, which also included 69 illustrations by Louis Le Breton, which depicted many of these demons. Plancy himself, despite writing this demonic manuscript, started off as a skeptic, reassuring the readers that the torments of hell described are merely imaginary, and the only one capable of enacting punishments and judgment after death is God. By 1830, Plancy was a devoted Roman Catholic, and so he made revisions to his manuscript. By the 1863 edition, with all the illustrations and engravings, the Infernal Dictionary was seen as a Roman Catholic work that affirmed the existence of demons. So join me today as we take a look at the Infernal Dictionary and examine some of the stranger and lesser known demons. Before we delve any deeper, a quick word from today's sponsor, Babbel, a fantastic resource for learning new languages. One of the goals I set myself this year was to continue learning various different languages, because when travelling, you never know which one might come in handy. It's also quite useful for me when researching video topics from all around the world to have a basic understanding of that given language. I began using Babbel on my desktop, but switched over to the app on my phone when I realised how easy it was to use on the go. There are numerous ways you can learn, ranging from beginner to expert, and Babbel doesn't just teach you vocabulary, you learn about different regional dialects, history, and culture. I tend to stick to the 10 minute lessons as you can fit them in whenever you have small amounts of free time throughout the day. As you're about to see, the language I chose was Spanish. La llama. La llama. Ellos. Ellos. Mallorca. Mallorca. La paella. La paella. If you'd like to start learning a new language, you can use my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription. If you do choose to do so, feel free to share what language you'd be interested in learning in the comments section, or perhaps even suggest one that you think I should consider learning next. From 1818 to 1863, the Infernal Dictionary went through five editions, and the best way to describe the book is as an A to Z encyclopedia for the occult, from its most noticeable practitioners, books, superstitions, demons, various forms of magic, and the supernatural. It's a good starting point for those who would like to delve into demonology and the occult. The book's layout is pretty much what you would expect from a dictionary, or in this case a demonic bestiary. There is a brief description of each demon which discusses their position in the hierarchy of hell, their domain, and the practices of those who wish to invoke them, as well as the amount of legions they control. This can range from a few lines to multiple paragraphs. De Plancy published many works in his lifetime, but none reached the same notoriety as the Infernal Dictionary. In his work, he featured demons from all parts of the world, many of which had already appeared in prior texts. But De Plancy's goal here was to create one overarching work as a guide into the occult. The first demon mentioned is Abigail, the Grand Duke of the Infernal Monarchy. Sixty legions march under his orders. Abigail takes the appearance of a horseman carrying a lance, scepter, or a war banner. For those concerned with the secrets of warfare, Abigail has all of the answers. He can see the future and does well in instructing leaders in how to win the admiration and trust of their soldiers. Abraxas was a demon that the Basilidians, a group of heretics in the 12th century, saw as their supreme god. We see images of Abraxas on coins and amulets, where he has the head of a rooster, the feet of a dragon, and a whip that he carries with him. 
The Basilidians also claimed that Jesus Christ was nothing more than a benevolent phantom sent to Earth by Abraxas. Adramalek is the High Chancellor of Hell, President of the High Council of Devils. According to the rabbis, he appears as either a mule or peacock, sometimes a mixture of both. Adramalek was worshipped in the northern parts of the Mesopotamian kingdom where they would burn children at his altars. Alastor is the supreme executor of the sentences of the infernal monarchy, hence the nickname The Executioner. Alastores is an ancient name that was once given to evil spirits. Alasur is an extremely powerful demon who takes the form of a knight mounted upon an enormous horse. His face shares features with that of a lion and he commands 36 legions. Alasur is given the title of Grand Duke of Hell and was responsible for sharing the secrets of astronomy. Amduskius also shares the rank of Grand Duke of Hell. He takes the form of a unicorn, unless he has been invoked by someone, he then assumes the form of a human. If Amduskius gives concerts, the recipient will hear trumpets and other musical instruments without ever seeing them. There are 29 legions under his control. Andras is the great Marquis of Hell. He has the body of an angel with the head of an owl, riding a black wolf and carrying a saber. He advises those he favours on how to kill their enemies, masters and servants. He is responsible for escalating discord and quarrels. Under his command, there are 30 legions. Astaroth is depicted as an ugly angel holding a viper, but he can also take the form of a dragon. He is a powerful Grand Duke of Hell and also acts as its treasurer. There are few questions he cannot answer as he knows the past and future. One's secrets are never safe. He is particularly well versed in the creation of the universe and the forts and fall of the angels. During the telling of these stories, he always makes it known that the punishment of the angels was fair, but in his case, it was unjust. Those who wish to approach Astaroth are warned of his putrid stench. The only way to counteract this is with a magical silver ring that helps protect against the odours of demons. In some accounts, Astaroth has been categorised as one of the seven princes of hell who visited Faust. Under his control, he has 40 legions. Baal or Bael is the head of the infernal powers. De Plancy cites the Grand Grimoire and the False Kingdom of Demons as famous pieces of work mentioning Baal. Here he is referred to as the first king of hell who resides in the east, with 60 legions under his control. Baal has three heads, one with the face of a toad, one with the face of a man, and the last a cat. Those who invoke Baal do so because he is sly and cunning. He can also teach them how to become invisible on command. Behemoth is a name you may have heard of before in the Book of Job, a creature described as a hippopotamus or sometimes a whale. The description we get here is that of a heavy and stupid demon whose domains are gluttony and pleasures of the belly. He is the butler and high cupbearer in hell. The image we see in the Infernal Dictionary is a pot-bellied elephant. There is a story of this monster that describes an insatiable appetite, and so God killed all of the females of this species so they could never multiply. Korm is a high president of hell, a demon of a superior class. He most commonly takes the form of a blackbird carrying a sword. On the occasion that he appears as a human, he does so through a burning brazier. Of all the beings in hell, Korm is the wisest. The astuteness of his arguments can cause despair amongst even the most seasoned and logical individuals. Under his command, he has 30 legions and is described as a demon who was once part of the Order of Angels. 
Cerbera, as his name would suggest, appears as a three-headed dog, similar to the Greek Cerberus, but he does differ sometimes as he also has the aspects of a raven. He is a Marquis of the Infernal Empire, a fierce and powerful demon. His somewhat fancy attire in the illustration reflects his association with eloquence and gracious living. Under his command, he has 29 legions. Crapu is the French word for toad, so this is less of an individual being or demon and more of the association that toads had with witchcraft. Pansy describes toads as being loved by witches and a necessity for them. He references a belief that witches were assisted by some kind of demon on their shoulder, which would often take the form of a toad. Furfur is a Count and High President of Hell. He appears as a stag with a flaming tail. He can also assume the guise of an angel, and his domain is maintaining relationships, husbands, and wives. If summoned, Furfur can only speak in lies, unless he is trapped within a triangle. There are 26 legions under his control. Lamia is a demon who splits open the bellies of pregnant women to devour their children. Her name is also given to a group of evil demons who can be found in the desert, with dragon heads at the end of their feet. They can also be found in cemeteries where they devour the bodies of the dead, leaving only the bones. Leches are a type of demon found in the woods. Similar to satyrs, from the waist up they have more of a human body, and from the waist down they resemble a goat. Leches were thought to be inspired by the Slavic leches, as they can shrink themselves to hide in the grass, but are capable of growing bigger than the tallest trees. They would patiently wait for people to walk into their woods and then lure them into their caverns disguising their voices as someone familiar. Leonard has a hefty amount of titles given to him. Grand Master of the Sabbaths, Demon of the First Order, Chief of the Subaltern Demons, Inspector and General of Sorcery, Black Magic and Witches. From the waist up, he resembles a goat with three horns. He is adored by witches who carry green candles in his presence. Paimon is one of the many kings of hell. When he appears to an exorcist, he is a man riding a camel. He wears a crown encircled with precious stones, and just to make things confusing, he has the face of a woman. There are 200 legions under his control, half from the Order of the Powers and half from the Order of Angels. Stolas is a High Prince of Hell who takes the form of an owl. When appearing before an exorcist, he will take the form of a man. He teaches astronomy as well as the properties of planets and the worth of precious stones. There are 26 legions under his control. Despite being over two centuries old, the Infernal Dictionary not only provides us with an interesting look into the attitudes, practices, and beliefs surrounding the occult in the 19th century, but it's still used today as an important framework and reference for those wishing to study demonology, the occult, and all things supernatural. The strange and creepy illustrations are also rather creative, and it's not hard to see why this book still captivates readers and inspires new works of art, literature, and film even to this day. 